Hello there. My name is Henry Shapiro. I'm one of the co-founders of Reclaim.ai. And today, if you're receiving this uh, email and watching this video, you are one of the few who have been chosen to participate in a private beta, a very early private beta of a complete rethink of Reclaim's prioritization system. Uh, we've been working on this problem for a long time. For many years, we've been thinking about how do we bring your priorities into the calendar and use those to drive smarter scheduling. Um, and this is really our smartest iteration on this problem to date, and, and probably our broadest in the sense of what it covers. Um, so in this video, since we don't have documentation yet, uh, I'm going to walk you through essentially what's changed here and kind of look at it through the lens of our time blocking features, our task and habit features, as well as our smart one-on-ones and scheduling links, which gets into some very interesting points around um, how you can use this to maximize your availability or maximize your availability for important stuff. So the first thing you'll notice if you log into the planner, once you've been added to the beta, is that uh, there's a new sidebar here. Uh, this sidebar previously uh, would show you things like your habits and your tasks. A lot of those, in fact, all those same controls are still there. Uh, but now what we've done is really sort of divided the world into four different priority levels, right? There's now a critical priority, high priority, medium priority, and low priority assignment for anything that you create and reclaim, as well as for, and we'll talk about this in a second, any events that are currently scheduled on your calendar that weren't scheduled by reclaim. And we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so if I expand these sections here, I can see which things are assigned to which priority. Uh, and this really kind of becomes my hub for um, how my schedule is being prioritized, how Reclaim is making trade-offs on my calendar. Uh, probably the best way to introduce you to priorities or to the new stuff that we're releasing with priorities is uh, through the lens of habits. So you can probably already tell this screen looks different. If you've used habits before, you probably remember that it used to be a stack rank list where you had high priority habits, and then we would schedule time for all your tasks. And then you had low priority habits, which were sort of like, with whatever time we have left over, once we've scheduled all your stuff, try to get time for these routines. So what we've moved to now is a model where you can assign any of those four priority levels to your habits. And so here, I've decided that lunch is always a P1 thing, right? I don't want anything to get scheduled over lunch. I don't want it to compete for anything unless that other thing is also P1. And then my next highest priority is picking up the dog at daycare. And then I got a pretty low priority habit here for a thing called oper oper op stuff, which is basically, you know, catch up on our invoices and make sure people are paid and, you know, important stuff, but uh, things I can, I can always do next week if I need to. Um, and so this is probably the first big change you're going to see. You can change these priorities directly from the habits here. And then, of course, when you go into edit, you'll also see the priority here as well. And so the way this is going to impact your schedule is Reclaim is going to look at this habit relative to all the other priorities on your calendar, and it's going to schedule it accordingly. So critical stuff gets prioritized more aggressively. Lower priority stuff gets scheduled less aggressively. Um, you will also see this now in tasks. If you head over to uh, settings, I'll actually start here. There is now a default setting for the priority of a task when it's created. Uh, we will still consider due date when the task is being scheduled, but P1 tasks with a later due date are going to get scheduled ahead of P2 tasks with an earlier due date, right? So we're really kind of anchoring on this idea that the priority is what dictates how aggressively we're going to try to schedule your time. When I go to create a task, you can see here I've got this priority flag, and so I can create tasks and assign them to different priority levels. Um, so that's habits and tasks and kind of gives you a sense of how these priorities are going to start showing up in both your time blocking features that Reclaim offers. The third area where these priorities are now showing up, and um, part of the reason you're on this list is probably because you have a lot of smart one-on-ones with Reclaim, is you can now prioritize your smart one-on-ones. And so you can now decide, hey, you know, I need to meet with Patrick pretty critically each week. I need to meet with our head of marketing, our head of sales. And then, you know, other folks it's important to meet with. But if if there's more important meetings that come up or customer escalations that come up, I want to make sure that I'm making time for those things. Um, so now I have this really nice control over how my smart one-on-ones actually get scheduled, which is a really, really common problem in Reclaim, especially as people uh, start using Reclaim for more and more of their one-on-ones. Um, so this is a really exciting development that uh, we're, we're uh, very excited for you to try out. And then second to lastly, I suppose, is what we've done with, with scheduling links. And so previously, uh, our scheduling links had a concept of priority, and there were two priority levels. There was a 
you know, normal priority, which would just show your free and busy times. And then there was high priority, which would say, hey, you know, book over anything that's reclaimed scheduled, even if it's marked as busy. We're now going even more granular with this. So now you can have a P1 scheduling link that you send out to somebody that will surface up more availability than a P2 link and more availability for that one than a P3 link and so on and so forth. Um, and so it's a really kind of nice way to start kind of structuring your links around how you think of your time, right? If you have a customer link that you want to make sure is always, you know, max availability kind of looks across your calendar and picks, you know, only P2 and below things to book over, um, it will, you know, it will work that way. And if you've got a scheduling link that's a little less high priority, you can mark it as, you know, P3 or P2 or something like that. Um, so this is really cool. And, and you know, you might be asking yourself at this moment, or if you're not, I'm going to ask you, what about everything else on my calendar? You know, this is great for scheduling links and smart one-on-ones and uh, habits and tasks. But like, what about all the other events that I have on my calendar, like these syncs that we have with our team that aren't scheduled by Reclaim? Well, now you can actually prioritize your non-reclaim events. And this is a really big shift for us as a product. In the past, we have never touched nor have ever booked over intentionally meetings that were scheduled on your calendar by other things besides reclaim. But now we're starting to lean into this idea that Reclaim can be a system that understands the priority of everything on your calendar. And that means that if you've got internal meetings or meetings that you know in your heart can be booked over for important customer calls or one-on-ones with important people in your company or people that you want to meet with more urgently or for tasks that are due very soon, you can now actually tell Reclaim, hey, this thing's okay to book over if you see something that's higher priority come in. Um, so this is really a big shift for us as we think about uh, Reclaim. And there's going to be a whole bunch of work downstream from this um, that's going to set us up for doing some really interesting things with your calendar. Um, a couple things to note on this front, uh, just to put your mind at ease, because I imagine that for some folks, this can be a little scary. The first thing to note is, by default, all the events on your calendar that weren't created by Reclaim, which we call user events, all of those events by default are marked as P1. So if you don't touch anything, they will all look like this. They'll all have a P1 priority. So they're never going to get booked over for anything uh, unless you decide to change that priority and override it. So that's the first thing to note. The second thing to note is, for at least for now, with scheduling links, uh, we are not allowing meetings that were booked via scheduling links to be overbooked by anything. Um, and this is something that we learned in testing as we were going through this process. Uh, we learned that, you know, those types of commitments, even if you sent someone a P3 link and then you send someone else a P1 link and they end up booking over the person who booked with a P3 link, it's, it's not really a nice thing and it's, it can be kind of embarrassing. And so, well, we do want to solve that problem long term and there's things we, we think we can do to kind of help with that. Um, we are currently not allowing for any meetings booked via a scheduling link to be overbooked by anything Reclaim does, which includes other scheduling link meetings, other tasks, other habits, et cetera. Overall, it's a really exciting development, right? If you kind of back up and look at it, you can now prioritize at a much more granular level your one-on-ones and your scheduling links, as well as your habits. Um, and for your tasks, even though you don't have that stack ranking control anymore, you get much more sort of bucketing around how you want to think about your tasks and your project. So we think this is just going to help a lot with kind of understanding how Reclaim schedules across the platform. And we've unlocked this really amazing thing now where you can take events and actually deprioritize them if you really want to open up your availability. Um, another thing to note here is you also have controls that allow you to change the priorities of meetings uh, for all events, as well as just for this event. Um, so we have recurring event controls. So if you've got a recurring daily standup that you say, hey, I, I want to make sure that thing's P2 uh, so that if anything P1 comes up, I can book over it and, and get that time back, um, you can do that today. We're really excited to share this with you. We're really excited to hear what you think. Uh, we're going to be setting up a Slack channel, which will be uh, you'll see a link to uh, be invited to it in the email that we send you about the beta. Um, and we're, we're in the process of trying to make this as amazing as possible before we roll it out to everyone in our customer base. Um, and while it's a very big change, we're really, really excited about where it's going to take us in terms of meeting scheduling and the way it's going to start really changing the way that our, our users think about their calendars. And so with that, I'll uh, leave you to it and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.